Hello my friend, in this video I'm going to compare Song Trust with Sound Exchange and answer the question, do you need both or do you need one or the other and how you can choose between the two options. So let's jump right into this and uh, answer the question. So Song Trust is a publishing administration company that collects royalties for songwriters and music publishers that have been generated by a song's composition. In comparison, Sound Exchange collects digital performance royalties for master recording owners and performers that have been generated from a master recording. So this right off the bat might sound a little bit confusing and we'll dive a little bit into this further in a second. But first, I'd like to let you know that I have written an article on this topic. So if you prefer the written word format or if you'd like to simply follow along with this video uh, simply go head over to Google and type in song trust versus sound exchange and I should be the first result uh, underneath a song trust actual ad so with that said let's dive right back into this actual video so when your music is streamed, you are owed royalties for the master recording, which is the actual audio file, which Sound Exchange can collect for you, as well as for the composition that was created, which is the songwriting and the intellectual property that went into the creation of the final audio recording, which Song Trust can collect for you. So again, what is the main difference between these two companies? The main difference between Sound Exchange and Song Trust is the type of royalties they collect, with Song Trust collecting royalties generated by compositions, also called publishing royalties, and Sound Exchange collecting royalties generated by the master recording, also called master recording royalties. So both companies have completely separate roles in their royalty collection with Song Trust collecting royalties on behalf of songwriters and music publishers, and with sound exchange collecting royalties on behalf of master recording owners and performers. However, as an independent artist, that is most likely the songwriter, music publisher, master owner, and performer, you may be wondering if you need to sign up for both of these services. And unfortunately, with most things, the answer is it depends. So let's dive into how to know which service to sign up for. So if you are self-releasing your own music through a music distributor like, say, Dist kid and you're getting thousands of streams per month you would want to only join song trust and the reason for that is because DistroKid actually collects most master recording royalties for you but does not collect publishing royalties which is why you would want to sign up for something like song trust to collect all those for you with that said, if you are self-releasing your own music through a music distributor like DistroKid, but you're not really getting that many streams, then you may want to hold off on signing up for SongTrust. You will not be able to recoup the SongTrust setup fee, which is around $75 to $100 with the money that they generate for you. So this is why I would recommend signing up for SongTrust only once you're building up a bit of traction with your music on Spotify and whatnot so that there is some money that you'll actually generate from Song Trust to actually re recover all these costs. Um, it's not a lot, but it's just my personal recommendation. I'm a little bit of a cheap person, so that's how I would go about doing it. With that said, if you have performed on a lot of songs but were not involved in distributing them yourself, you may want to sign up for both Song Trust and Sound Exchange to track all of the royalties down for you, particularly if you know that any of the songs have been doing well. So. Basically, Sound Exchange sounds like a little bit of a better option if you are not actually self-releasing the song. So if you're performing on songs, you're playing the guitar on a song, or you're a co-songwriter, anything like that on songs, that Sound Exchange can be great to collect those royalty for you if there is not a label involved that is sending over those master recording royalties already on behalf of some kind of contract or agreement that you've set up. So, in my opinion, the bottom line seems to be that Sound Exchange is really great for performing or session musicians that are not self-releasing their own music, and Song Trust is really great for any musician that is self-releasing their music, and particularly if their music is doing well around the globe. So, I did mention around the globe, and specifically, why might I be mentioning that? And that really leads us right into the next section of this video, which is, should you, you, should you be using Song Trust? So... To best decide if Song Trust makes sense to you, it makes sense to first get a basic understanding of music publishing. So whenever your music is streamed, there are two types of royalties created, master recording royalties and music publishing royalties. Sound Exchange handles the collection of master recordings if you are not signed up with a music distributor like DistroKid, while Song Trust collects the music publishing royalties. So in particular, what makes Song Trust so important is because there's performance rights organizations for each region of the world that collect performance royalties for when your music is played in those particular regions. Song Trust is really great because they actually collect from all of these performance rights organizations around the world. So you don't need to sign up 
upload your song information and collect payment from each of these, which can be very annoying and take a lot of time. Um, in addition to all this, there is also a mechanical royalty that is generated uh, whenever your music is streamed, and it is a portion of music publishing royalties that is much harder for you to collect yourself, which is where Soundcrust which is again where song trust gets so great because they collect this and they just generally make it easy to get all of the money that it's owed for you sent to you in one place it's a lot easier so again to wrap that up nicely about song trust any artist that is getting thousands of plays per month around the world and doesn't want to deal with setting up a publishing company or setting up accounts with every international performance rights organization will definitely benefit from the additional royalties that song trust can bring in however again i would definitely want to mention that you should hold off on joining song trust if your music project is not yet getting much attention or streams it may not make sense to sign up for song trust because all they only take a small 15 percent of just the royalties that they collect there is a hundred dollar setup fee so in my mind at least i would say ideally your music is being played enough for you to recoup the cost of that sign up fee additionally if your music is only being streamed in your home country say if you're based in the States and your music is mainly being streamed in the United States, it may make more sense to just sign up with a performance rights organization in your region like BMI uh, because it is free to do so. They can collect just the performance rights royalties, but since it may not be a lot at that point, at least it's just kind of a cost efficient way to go about that. They don't take a percentage. They usually don't have any kind of setup fee. They don't collect mechanical royalties, but it's a good way to get started, I would say. So now let's dive into the next question, which is answering, do you need sound exchange? So if you own your master recordings or are a session or performing artist, then it can make sense to consider registering with sound exchange to make sure you are collecting all of the master recording royalties that are owed to you. However, if you have music being played that is mostly your own music and you have signed up with a music distributor that already collects those royalties for you, like DistroKid for example, then sound exchange may not be worth your time. So consider joining sound exchange if you are a session artist who has played on other people's songs, you're a performing artist that plays other people's songs live, you own master recordings, you are not self-releasing music through a music distributor, you are not on a label that collects these royalties for you already. However, I would hold off on joining sound exchange if music you have played is not getting very many streams at all right now. You don't own any of the master recordings. You are already releasing music through a music distributor that collects these for you, or if you're on a label that collects these royalties for you. And lastly, I wanted to answer a couple of questions that you may have about SongTrust and SoundExchange. So starting off with, does SongTrust collect from SoundExchange? SongTrust does not collect from SoundExchange as they collect different royalties. SongTrust collects royalties generated by compositions, while SoundExchange collects digital performance royalties generated by master recordings. Moving on, do I need Sound Exchange if I have DistroKid? You do not need to register with Sound Exchange if you use DistroKid to distribute your music, as DistroKid already collects master recording royalties on your behalf. Do I need SongTrust if I have DistroKid? So DistroKid is a music distribution company that allows artists to get their music on online stores and streaming services like Spotify, while SongTrust is a publishing administration company that helps artists collect publishing, mechanical, and live performance royalties once that music is already up on online stores and streaming services. So DistroKid does things like upload your music to these places and collect the master recording royalties and payments for you, aka like the Spotify royalties, and SongTrust collects the music publishing royalties, which is the performance royalties and mechanical royalties, and also signs you up for and allows you to easily submit your music to performance rights organizations around the world. And that is a breakdown of Song Trust versus Sound Exchange. Hopefully that demystified it quite a bit. If you're wondering how I'm going about this, I'm personally using DistroKid to distribute my music around the world to Spotify and all that kind of stuff. Uh, the main thing that I like is the unlimited song uploads for a small fee because I like to release music on a monthly basis. I think it's the best way to really break into the Spotify system and all that kind of stuff. If you want to check out a review I did of DistroKid, you can go ahead and click the link above. Um, and then what I am using also is Song Trust. So I've generated about like three, well, about four million streams on Spotify so far. So there's quite a good enough reason for me to go on Song Trust, in my opinion, because I am generating enough streams that I'm going to get that money back in performance royalties. So that's why it makes sense to me. And I don't really want to sign up and submit music to all the different pros around the world, the uh, performance rights organizations around the world. So that's why I did a bunch of research and decided on SongTrust. So actually, if you want to check out a review I have of SongTrust, you can check it above. And if you want to learn a little bit more of how 
I've gotten so many streams on Spotify, all that kind of stuff. I wrote an art, I wrote an article and I made a video about uh, how I got on, uh, I think it was like over 10 Spotify editorial playlists. It was the first time I did it. I've been on a lot more since, but you can check a video I did above on how I did that. And other than that, hopefully you found this video useful. If you'd like to learn a little bit more about this as well, I'm also giving away a free seven step Spotify release checklist. It goes through all the steps that I've personally do every single release that I've done. And it's just makes things a lot easier when it comes to release time, knowing all the steps you need to do. Most of the work is done before release day so that on release day you can actually chill. That's my preferred way of doing it. So I would definitely check that out. Free resources for you that will be in the description below. But other than that, hope you found this video useful. If you did, make sure you like and subscribe and all that good stuff. Good luck on your next release and collecting all the money owed to you for that release. And I will see you in the next video, my friend. Have a good one.